Hello gorgeous peeps and welcome to Techspert Weekly, the only weekly tech news show that your mum watches with the curtains closed while your dad's off down the boozer. And once again it's been more action packed than the average episode of EastEnders with so much hot tech arriving at Techspert Towers I couldn't even begin to shake a stick at all of it if for some reason that's what I wanted to do. And some of it I'm legally bound not to actually even tell you about just yet. Uh, but here's a big clue, the most exciting thing that arrived this week is stashed in my pants and it rhymes with walrus mate P. But anyway, Anyway, let's not hang about. I'm a very busy man, got bills to pay, got monkeys to spank, so let's jingle all the way. Techspert Weekly! Now, it's actually been a fairly light week as far as phone launches have gone, even though it doesn't feel like it because about a gajillion of the buggers have arrived on my doorstep. Seriously, stop sending me phones and start sending me hard booze, please. In fact, the only proper launch of the week happened on Wednesday where finally the fresh Realme 7 and Realme 7 Pro were unleashed here in the UK, set to take on Xiaomi with its Poco X3 NFC and the Redmi Note 9 Pro. The 6.5 inch Realme 7 is impressive enough with its 90 hertz IPS screen, its capable Helio G90 chipset and a mighty 5000 milliamp battery. Not bad specs at all considering the price starts from just 179 quid. And for a 90 hertz smartphone that can blaze through the likes of Call of Duty and PUBG no problem whatsoever that's definitely some very tasty stuff indeed and the Realme 7 will go on sale here from October the 21st. However if you throw an extra 100 quid at Realme you can instead grab yourself this here Pro model which comes packing an OLED screen as well as a much improved 64 megapixel camera, bonkers fast 65 watt super dot charging support, stereo speakers and a few other upgrades that will make you weep salty tears of joy. And if you're a bloke, most likely catapult your underwear across the room. All of that said though, the standard Realme 7 is actually superior to the Pro model in a couple of ways and I'm not just talking about the price. And because I'm a massive c piece, you'll have to go away and watch my Realme 7 vs Realme 7 Pro video to see exactly what the deal is there. And if your heart is set on the Realme 7 Pro, good news, not long at all to wait now. October the 13th is the release date here in the UK and you'll be able to grab both the 7 and the 7 Pro from Realme's UK website and also direct from Amazon.co.uk. And unbelievably, that's it for the launches this week as well. We're kind of in the, what is it, the eye of the storm, the middle bit of the tornado, uh, where everything is surprisingly all right. And uh, you kind of glance up and you see cows floating around, you know things are going to kick off again in a minute. That'll be next week. But now it's time for the part of the show that haunts your dreams until you wake up screaming in the middle of the night in a warm puddle of what you can only hope and pray is sweat. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. As first up, Cole says, a tech enthusiast who moans about there being way too much tech. It's so the British way. We need a good moan. LOL. Um, yeah, 100%. I'd be wondering if there was absolutely bugger all to do as well. You know, as Brits are basically just living in a perpetual state of disgruntledness and who can blame us, frankly. Now, Francis says, hello, Chris. Any recommendations for a budget smartwatch? Uh, well, not many that I've used personally. I really like the uh, the Tick Watches, the likes of the Tick Watch E, I think it was. Uh, they generally cost in the sort of low £100 and they're fully featured Wear OS smartwatches. Uh, Xiaomi, of course, has just launched the Mi Watch, which we featured last week. So go check out that show if you want to know more on that. And the Amazfit it's supposed to be really good but I personally haven't tested it out. The cheapest smartwatch that I've actually had strapped to my pale northern wrist is the Realme watch which costs just 50 quid but it's so shonky it kind of feels like it came out of a Christmas cracker. Uh, on the subject of uh, smartwatches Barbara says I preferred your name for the me watch bit of a mouthful though. Uh, said the actress to the bishop. Uh, next up, Funker Monkey says, Techspert Weekly is one of the highlights of my week, along with Wash Day Wednesday, Fish Finger Friday, mm, tasty, and Movie Night if the gods think we've behaved well enough. Ah, oh, Christ, if anything's going to cause a frickin' prison riot, it's this drivel here, I'll tell you. Uh, there was also lots and lots of pixel chat, unsurprisingly, as it all properly uh, kicked off last week. Uh, Chris, Alex, and a few others asked if I'll be reviewing. Well, <laughs> The Pixel phones have arrived at Techspert Towers. So yes, I am planning on reviewing them. Stay tuned uh, for lots of juicy coverage. Uh, unboxing should be going live already. Uh, and I'm hoping to do comparisons and all kinds of other stuff as well. Because who needs sleep? Sleep is for pussies. Uh, next up, Danger Zone, great name, says, uh, So the Pixel 5 completely loses the headphone jack. It doesn't even leave a smidgen of a headphone jack. Nope, not a smidgen, not even a snifter. Uh, basically, if you want a headphone jack, you're on these sort of premium options, basically, or the Xperia 1 Mark II and the Xperia 5 Mark II. Samsung, Apple, OnePlus, all of them have got rid of the headphone jacks on their super premium smartphones. Bugger. Uh, next up, Daki Dashi, sorry, I probably completely murdered the pronunciation of that, uh, says, come on, bro, if you're really desperate, we can send you some 72% vodka from Georgia. Uh, we call it Wawa. 
made from uh, after wine remainders. It's a cold wow wow because that's all you're capable of actually seeing once you've drunk a cup of the stuff. I don't know man, I mean I like hard booze and at the moment I really like being unconscious as well uh, but even that sounds a bit too full on for my taste. I think my liver has literally pissed itself at the thought of that. Although it does remind me that Brewdog just recently did a uh, super strength beer. Uh, let me look this shit up. Yeah here we go, Brewdog versus Schorschbrow. Strength in numbers it's called. Uh, it's 57.8%. Oh my god. 28 euros 95 for a bottle of the stuff. Reaches its colossal abbreviation through the traditional Eisbock method uh, in which the beer is frozen and then they remove chunks of ice so you're left with just basically the booze. I absolutely love that. The extreme dedication to removing the water, the one bit of the beer that won't get you pissed so you're left with just the good stuff. And I mean, I'm extremely tempted to buy a bottle of that but uh, it's probably not going to be nice, is it? Anyway, it's not the friggin' booze show. It's the, uh, the tech show, the tech news show. What's this show called? again. But that said, of course, the very next comment is also about booze. Amir says, can we get the recipe of the Mr. Muscle cocktail? I'm asking for a friend. I'm sure you are, buddy. I mean, I, I wouldn't go so far as to call it a cocktail. I'd basically just mix it with whatever you have lying around. I believe that Weatherspoon's bartenders prefer a bit of Pepsi. Uh, Hayden says, been subscribed for a few weeks. All I know is that I'm concerned about this guy's liver. Uh, no idea what you mean, Hayden. Uh, right, seriously, time to get a comment that isn't about booze. Oh, and in actual fact, it's time to resurrect another classic Techspert weekly segment. Uh, so we'll roll jingle. Give me free shit. I like free shit. Give me free shit please. So last week we were talking about the many virtues of coffee uh, and mostly coffee mixed with booze. Are you starting to see a running theme here by any chance? And all of that chat prompted the lovely Ben from Bondi Coffee to send me one of his delicious samples of instant coffee. But it's more than just coffee, it's also got extra bonus sh in them like plant extracts and stuff to make you feel all super awesome and put the swag back in your step. Like this one here, if you have this before a workout you'll be able to like bench 300 pounds, you'll be able to chin Godzilla, you'll be able to do whatever you want. Apparently can also make your skin tingle a bit so I'm a little bit scared to try that one but the green tea extract one was delicious. Does all that bonus stuff that they cram in there actually do anything? What do I look like, a food scientist? All I know is that it's tasty stuff and it gave me enough pep after just two cups of the stuff to beaver away in the studio until about 11pm and then I still had enough left in the tank to blow some annoying school kids into tiny moist little chunks in Call of Duty. Um, on the subject of coffee still, uh, Mr P says uh, you need something to keep you up for 16 hours, well have you considered the blue pill? Well the truth of the matter is I'm so horrendously British that I would just feel absolute mortification going into a chemist and asking for anything along those lines. I'd still get bloody embarrassed buying a pack of rubber johnnies for god's sakes. Which means my only other option would be to buy it from one of those ropey machines that's been on the wall of a dodgy pub toilet since about 1975 and probably the pills inside are just as old. And frankly I refuse to put anything inside of my body that I find in a gents. Uh, also on the subject of random rubbish segments resurrected from the past and everything of course we took a brief and rather lovely hiatus from which crap celebrity do I look like this week last week. But like a bad case of the clap just when you think the worst is over up it pops again to ruin your bloody day. Which crap celebrity do I look like this week? Uh, so a couple again this week around. Uh, Carol says Texpert looks like Xerxes from 300. <laughs> Yeah, fair play, except uh, probably about 12 foot shorter and without quite so much face metal. Uh, Vinyak says, you are not Bruce, you are just bald Chase Crawford. Not sure who that is, let me Google. Okay, no, he's a bit of a hunk to be fair. Yeah, uh, dude from Gossip Girl, never seen that. Of course, I'm just pretending that I haven't seen it to be really cool. I've actually got every single episode on DVD. Apparently, he was nominated for the Teen Choice Award for Choice Male Hottie. Yeah, no, I'll happily be a bold version of that, lad. And another one here as well. Your eyebrows look like Forky from Toy Story. Uh, hang on, didn't, <laughs> didn't he have a mono brow? You get me all paranoid now. So this week's winner is the Chase Crawford guy. Uh, the rest of you can do one. All right, time is once again a ticking and I've got so many bloody phones to get to, so better make this uh, the last one. Uh, Martin says, I've been fascinated by the LG Wing and the Microsoft Surface Duo. Uh, the LG Wing seems to have genuinely interesting functionality, whereas the Duo seems beautiful, but nowhere near ready. I mean, yeah, I guess the Duo is basically a, a direct ripoff almost of uh, LG's own dual screen smartphones, which of course 
course they are actually two screens except LG has the advantage of you can actually take off the second screen and just use it as a standard smartphone which is a good idea. I mean personally I do prefer the lovely seamless experience of something like the Galaxy Z Fold but it's all so expensive and I just have to think like personally I would never really need two screens like that if I'm going to split screen multitask to you know watch a YouTube channel at the same time as I'm messaging you can do that on you know like the Xperia 5 Mark II it's a six inch smartphone. If I'm going to be doing anything more complicated than that I'll just whip out my freaking laptop you know. And as for the LG Wing well I think most people probably know my thoughts on this one already. I mean I love it when tech companies innovate I love when something a bit different hits the market but seriously the day that they came up with the concepts for the LG Wing was probably the bring your kids to work day or something like that where they literally give Jimmy and Susan a box of crayons and said go on kids go and create something wonderful. Kind of similar to the bloody Homer car from Simpsons. Um, either that or the LG HQ is directly next door to a glue factory and they decided to leave all the windows open that day. Anyway that's seriously all we've got time for this week. I'm sorry it's probably a little bit shorter than usual but yeah a ton of blah, blah, blah. Ah! Uh, but please do leave your comments down below and we'll try and smash through as many of those as possible next week if I haven't actually put a shotgun to my temple by then. Uh, next week we've got the Apple launch on Tuesday the 13th. Uh, the invitations came out earlier this week. They say high speed. I'm not sure about speed but I definitely need some sort of class A drugs to get through a two and a half hour iPhone launch that's for sure. And then day after that on Wednesday you've got the OnePlus launch where we're expecting to see the OnePlus 8T uh, and you can watch that on the OnePlus YouTube channel otherwise they've also crafted some special virtual OnePlus world where you can walk around and probably have awkward conversations with other weird virtual people. And then as if the start of next week wasn't already busy enough on Tuesday and Wednesday it's also Amazon Prime Day where Prime subscribers can basically piss away the last of their savings on junk that they didn't need. And I remember back when I was a proper journalist having to cover the Prime Day stuff and the Apple launches and frankly two of those on one day. Ouchies. If you're having to do all of that shiz then deepest sympathies and hope you've got lots of booze on your desk ready to get you through that one. So anyway that's this week's show. Thank you to everyone who's watched and have yourselves a lovely weekend. I know mine is going to mostly involve clutching shiny gadgets and banging on at this camera in this room. Yay can't wait. Until next week love you lots. Bye.